Hello everybody, Science1324 here and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at how these little crank flashlights work. Now this particular one I have actually comes in two pack. I've got a second one right here. I got it off eBay. It was about $8 and it had free shipping actually, which was really nice. <clears throat> so these things are actually really nice. I've never actually owned one of these. But they're really nice little little flashlights. They seem pretty robust for being made out of plastic, but let's go ahead and tear into this and see how it works. So let's get these screws pulled out of here. All right, and as far as I can tell, that is the only three screws that are holding this together. So now we should just, oh, oh wow. I was not expecting that. Oh, okay, so it appears the little black things on the sides were holding it together as well as those screws. I'm going to have to locate the other side of that at some point, but that's interesting. Luckily, as far as I can tell, it doesn't look like I broke it, so I can actually put this back together because I'm going to be using this for a new or for a project in the future if you guys are interested. I'll post a link in the video. If you want to go check that out, what that is going to be is using one of these to charge your cell phone. So if you're interested in learning how to do that, go ahead and click on the link in the video. If it's not there yet, I haven't uploaded it yet. So, but it will be there soon if it's not already. So anyways, back to what we were doing. We've got our flashlight here. So looking at it, what we've got here, it looks like we've got a battery here, a little circuit board and the motor to generate the electricity. So let's look a little closer at this. Let's see what kind of battery we've got here. It looks like we have a nickel metal hydride 3.6 volt battery and it looks like it's got three cells in there. Oh, interesting. And it's just kind of stuck on with some double sided tape which looks like I ripped off when I popped it open. <laughs> and we've got the circuit board here which actually looks fairly simple. Let's actually, uh, let me take the lens off here. I'm going to set this down on the table and zoom, zoom in a little bit. There we go. Okay. So we've got our circuit board here. Let's go ahead and flip this over and see if we've got anything on the other side. No, nope. looks like we've just got tracers on the other side. So this is actually a fairly simple one. So looking at it from the top here, we've got a couple of sets of wires. Let me move the batteries over here. So we've got, so this is the motor that spins as you, you can actually see some of the gears down in there. Let me close that. Pull that little handle out here, and you can see the, the gear spinning there as I crank this, and it's geared up so that it can spin that motor faster to create enough voltage for the circuit. So anyway, let's go back, get back to the circuit here. So it looks like we've got the wires running into the bottom of this. I can't read the. Uh, there's a part number on there, uh, but what it is is a rectifier. So what that does is you've got the wires running in from the motor here and here into the, these two pins right here. And what it does is usually these are used for turning alternating current into direct current. But what it's doing on this one is it's making it so no matter which way you rotate this motor, this pin will always be positive and this pin will always be negative. So basically it takes the whichever way you rotate this and puts out the same current going either way or not, sorry, let me correct myself, not the same current, but the same polarity out of each of these pins, no matter which way you rotate that. That's important because obviously you can't charge a battery, or at least this battery, with alternating current. It's not going to work too well. So it converts it to direct current to charge the battery, as well as to run the LEDs here. So and it looks like we've got a little current limiting resistor on there, I'm assuming probably for the LEDs. These LEDs about this size, these look like, oh, I don't even know. So what it does is it limits the amount of current that goes into the LEDs so that we don't fry them because they're only designed to run on 1.5 volts. So this limits the current enough that the voltage drop will equal 1.5 volts or 1.3 volts in each of these. And then of course we've got our power button to turn it on and off, which looks like it's got two settings. It's got one setting for all three of them and one setting for just one. And it doesn't have any kind of integrated circuits or anything like that to control that. It's just a multi-position switch. So what we've got on here is it's got four pins for this switch. Two of the pins go to this, and then one pin goes to the external, or these two outside LEDs. 
So when we click it once, here, it sends power to this pin and to one of these two pins. Which one, I am not 100% sure, just because I don't have a way to test it with it in the circuit board. But that's what it does. So it takes the power from this, which comes from the LED, which goes from there to there, runs along here, into here, goes into the switch, which that solder joint is not very good. The rest of them look okay, but that is not a very good solder joint. Anyways, so when we first click it for the first time, it turns this, it connects to this pin and one of these two pins. And then when we click it again, it breaks the connection and click it one more time. And then it goes to the opposite one of these two pins. So it only lights up that LED. And that is actually pretty much all that there is. This battery is hooked up right here. And then where's the red go to? Right here as well. So coming out of here, we've got the positive from the rectifier goes down to the positive of the battery. And then the negative from the rectifier goes up and there is a common bus or negative contact that runs across the front of the board here down and to the negative of the batteries. So when the light's not on, or even when it is on, when you crank that, it sends power to the batteries to be stored so that you can run the LEDs and not have to crank it constantly. And that is pretty much it for this little light. It's a fairly simple little circuit on there. And very simple in operation, which is really good because the more complex you get, the more things you have to go wrong. Now, it's not completely apart yet, so let's go ahead and take it the rest of the way apart so you can see the gears that are in here. So let's go ahead and take these two screws out. We'll go ahead and lift this out of the way. Well, actually, let's go ahead and flip this over. Those screws are probably going to fall out now. Yep, there goes that one. All right, so. What we've got here is the gears that gear up the speed from the crank to the motor. And as you can see, it gears it up actually a pretty good amount. That spins pretty good. Obviously, this one's missing its center shaft, so it's going to be kind of hard to line these up to get them to spin. I'll do my best here. Oh, got it for a second. But yeah, so the gears geared up and then spin the gear on the motor here which in turn powers the LEDs, but it doesn't look like I can spin it fast enough with my finger to produce enough voltage to run it, unfortunately. But yeah, that's pretty much the operation of this little crank flashlight, and the majority of them are gonna be similar to this. Obviously, there's different designs, different patents on how to do it, but the general idea is the same. So, and that is pretty much everything. And this is actually the same light we will be using in one of the our future projects. We're gonna be using this crank flashlight to charge a cell phone in an emergency situation. So make sure you stay tuned for that. I'll put a link in the video again. It's the same project I was talking about earlier. I'll put a link in the video somewhere for you to click on as soon as I have that put up. But that is pretty much the end of this video. So thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe because there will be more videos coming. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye.